I'm really excited this morning to to get started with this podcast. But first, let's read our prayers for for every person that walks the face of this earth today. They come out of Ephesians, the first chapter in the 15th verse. It says, ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made Him head over all things for the benefit of the church, and the church is His body. It is made full and complete by Christ. Christ, who filled all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. His roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That is my earnest prayer for every person that walks the face of this earth, including myself, that the, that the eyes of our understanding would be opened. Oh, to God's love and His mercy and His grace and His infinite wisdom that He wants to give to us today. Now, let's see what God's Word has to say today. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you and I praise you for this opportunity. Holy Spirit, I ask you to touch my mind, touch my mouth. Guide me and direct me in the direction that you'd have me to go today. I want to ever to be the light that I should be and the guide that I should be through God's word to the people that listen to this podcast. I thank you and I praise you for all you're doing in those people's lives, in my lives. Guide and direct in this in this podcast today. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. I'm going to be taking my scripture out of uh, John, the 15th chapter today. And uh, I've referenced this scripture from time to time, but the Lord led me this morning to look at it again. It says, if ye abide in me, the seventh verse, starting with the seventh verse of the 15th chapter of John, it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. You know, for years, years, I'm talking about decades, close to two decades, or really over two decades. I desired to be a disciple of Christ, and I earnestly tried in my 20s. I mean, earnestly done all that I knew to do to be used of God, to be used of Him and in a, in a way that he wanted. But I failed miserably. Now you listen to me. I want you to understand something today. I'm not, I'm not, 
I want, I want to direct you in a path that you don't have to spend 25 years of your life searching for what you needed to be doing. But if you will listen and understand, you can find your direction very, very quickly if you'll just adhere and listen to what I am saying today about God's Word. And I sought, I mean, I sought Him. I mean, done my dead level best in my early twenties to to just to just be led and 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 to to allow God to to use me. I wanted to be used. I, I mean, I had a desire to be used, but somewhere around the turn of the century, and that don't even sound right, but somewhere around the turn of the, of the century, the weight that I had put upon myself, the the struggle that I had carried that almost a decade, uh, it, was, it was just more than I could bear. And I threw up my hands and quit. And now I, I know today the reason. And back then it was everything that I seen around me. But really it was just my neglect to do what I should have been doing from the beginning. And I want to read this seventh verse again. Then I'm going to jump down and read the last verse or the last part of the verse eight. It says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you. That's where I missed it right there. I was not putting God's word first in my life and putting it into my heart and and consuming it. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I read, but listen what it says. So, ye sh- so shall ye be my disciples. If his words abide in you, you shall be his disciples. Because I'm going I'm to tell you something. If his word gets into you and, and, and you allow it to do what it's supposed to do, and that is feed you. And don't try to mold it into what you want it to be, but just take it for what it reads. Believe it. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you and understand that God's Word is the ultimate guide to a prosperous life, to a strong life, a victorious life, a Christian life that only that most only dream about. And it's available to everyone. And it's through his word. If ye abide in me, Christ said this now, it's in red. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. What did it say? You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And you say, well, you know, people go off and they ask some crazy things that that has nothing to do with God's will. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But I'm going to tell you something. If they're going around asking things contrary to God's will, that God's word is not abiding in them because God's word is his will. And if you'll put his will or his word into you, you will seek his will every day of your life. I know that. I, I, it, has, it has come to fruition in my life. Uh, it, it just thrills me to know that I have put enough of God's word into me that it has changed my heart and my life and it has changed me to his guidance and his word and his will in my life, not my own anymore. Glory to his name. That thrills me to know that you can do the same thing. You can take what I'm telling you today and allow it to mold you. Not my words, but His. His, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And the last part of of the uh, 
verse 8 says, and ye so shall ye be my disciples. When are you going to be a disciple of Christ? When you put his word into your heart and your life and allow the Holy Spirit to apply it to every, to every step you take in your lifetime. Glory to God. It thrills me to know that. God will guide you. He will take you places that you never thought in a million years you'd go. Yeah, he'll make something out of you that you know that it was only a dream. And he will guide you in a place that you won't want for anything. But you have to abide in him. And his words has to abide in you. Get it into your heart and your life. And you say, preacher, that's, that's well and good. I, I mean, I, that really sounds great. But I don't, I, I've never been born again. Or you may say, I've been born again, but I don't know where to start. I'm going to tell you something. First of all, if you've never been born again, Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's, that's salvation in a nutshell. If you've not been born again, make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Confess him as Lord. Believe that God raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. And you may say, well, I've done that. I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm born again. Well, that's, that's wonderful. But so many times, just like I did, just like I did, I was born again, but I didn't allow Christ to guide me as Lord. Like I told you, I spent a better part of two decades, one, it was some, one decade in church and one decade out of church acting like an idiot. But I desired to be a disciple, to be used. I wanted to do something great with my life and, and didn't know how to do it. Why? Because I hadn't allowed him to be Lord of my life. And when he is Lord of your life, you will put his word first in everything you do. You will allow his word to guide you and direct you in everything. I'm talking about what pair of shoes to wear every day. I mean, that's something that you got to understand that he will guide you and direct you and make you strong that you can stand and look at look at the the things that used to just so easily beset you and look at them and think, no, not today, not ever again. That just thrills me to know that. But it all started in my life when I started believing God's word above all opinion and putting it into my heart, putting it into my life and standing on it, making it first in my life, allowing God to be first in my life, to guide me and direct me and take me where I needed to go. How? through the guidance and the the strength that God's Word will bring to all of us if we'll allow Him to. Glory to His name. That thrills me. I mean thrills me to know that. Won't you make Jesus Christ Lord of your life? Whether you're lost and need a Savior, or whether you're saved and need restoration, All you have to do is call on Him, get in His Word, believe Him, confess Him as Lord and Savior of your life, and believe what God done, and that has raised Him from the dead to justify you. Won't you make Jesus Christ Lord of your life and then put his word into your heart and into your life and watch him change you? Watch it change you. Watch God's word change you like you've never been changed before. Changed you into something that he can use. 
Glory to God. He done it for me. He can do it for you. He will do it for you. He is no respecter of person. He will do what he's done for me and countless others in this world. He will do for you for his honor and his glory. Allow Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life. Give God's word first place in your life and watch your life change forever. Hey, if you'll do just exactly what I'm telling you to do today, and that is abide in His Word and let His words abide in you, watch God change your life. Watch Him change your life. If God has changed your life, listen to this podcast. Go to our website. We want to hear from you. It's the-prodigalson.com. Let us know what God is doing in your life. Let us know what you want Him to do in your life. We want to agree with you according to God's Word and see God change you. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.